it going guys? I hope you're all doing well out there today and welcome to lockdown two, day one here in the UK. Uh, for those not in the know, the UK has just entered its second lockdown for four weeks with the COVID pandemic. So I've got nothing to do but do my remote sessions and some YouTube stuff. So expect a lot more video content coming up. And while it's fun to do the produce stuff that takes the planning and that, I thought I might do something I'm going to call pedals and a pint. Uh, where I just grab some gear that I'm into at the moment. We'll have a listen to some tones, have a beer, and uh, chat about any gear news that's going on. If it ends up being popular, I might make it a monthly thing or whatever. You let me know if you dig this kind of thing. So on the board today, we've got the Fox Rocks Octron 2, the Maxon SD9 Sonic Distortion, and the Strymon Flint. And in the glass today, we've got Coco Noco, Coconut Mocha Milk Stout by the Drygate Brewing Company. Uh, it's uh, Lidl had their craft beer week last week, so while we were doing the shopping, we picked up a load of these interesting and some not so interesting craft beers. This one's really dark and coffee-y, coconutty. Oh, quite strong also. <laughs> Onto the pedals now that I've got in front of me. I'm gonna start at this end of the board, which might seem a bit counterintuitive, but I like reverb on everything, so if I go through this first, I can leave the reverb on for the others. Now, the Strymon Flint has been out for ages and ages, and I've only just got to try it. got to say thanks to my buddy Joe for the lend of this pedal, and I am beyond impressed, if I'm honest. I've always used the Hall of Fame Mini by TC for my reverb for the longest time, and while it's really great, there is something quite special about the reverb on this, and also the tremolo side is spectacular. So... Let's have a listen to the verb to start with. So you've got 60s, 70s, and 80s. 60s is a spring. 70s is a plate, if I'm not mistaken. And 8 is a hall, but sort of like a rack processor hall. So if we start on 60s, all the... Uh, it's my dry guitar sound to start with. Just a nice, uh, clean... Bit weird without a reverb, but there you go. Um... And then add in the flint. Really, uh, reverb just makes an amp come, uh, come to life to me. I can't really play without it now. Um, but that is a great sound in spring. And I like my reverbs a little bit darker. That decay time is quite nice. Probably take the mix up a little bit. A little bit more. So you can take the color control, and make it really bright. Or darken it right up. Which is cool, I find you can have more mix if you darken it up a bit and it's not so prominent. Decay times can get a bit ridiculous. And also the mix can take it quite extreme. You can do that surfy thing, which I can't do, but it gives you the idea. Going down to 70s, which is like a plate reverb. I've always liked plate reverbs because they kind of got the spring, the sort of springiness without being too wobbly, if that makes any sense. I can find I, some spring reverbs get quite twangy. I can't really put my finger on what it is, but I've always leaned a bit more towards a plate. It's a little bit more stable. <laughs> 70s 
Same controls, you can take it really bright and ambient. Or darken it right up. And then the last one is the 80s, which is a, like a hall kind of setting. Very cool, love the reverb sound. And now onto the tremolo, I'm gonna leave on a little bit of spring reverb. Just so it's not too dry. Um, and we're gonna start off in the harmonic tremolo mode. And as you can hear, the order of effects is the reverb into the tremolo, like it would be in a typical Fender amp, but you can hold these down and turn the decay knob and it will flip the order. I find if you turn the intensity up and the speed down, you get almost like a univibe type thing. Think that's my favorite trem mode. Uh, then we've got a tube 63 tube tremolo, which I imagine is like a bias tremolo. And then a 65 photo cell trem. So this one's a bit more stuttery. Super cool pedal. I think I'm going to have to get myself one as soon as I start earning some decent money gigging again. Next up, we've got the Maxon SD9 Sonic Distortion. Uh, this is the not so secret weapon of players like uh, Mike Landau, Scott Henderson. That's how I came to know of it. Appearance wise, you could probably mistake it for a tube screamer from a distance, but it's a completely different animal. This is more of a distortion pedal. It sounds pretty amp like and dynamic. Um, I, I really enjoy it, but it does have some quirks. The tone control gets insanely aggressive. So it's right down at like nine o'clock. Uh, I think that's roughly where, where Landau has it. It might even be lower than that, to be honest. But it works really well into an amp that's just breaking up. Into a clean amp, it can be a bit toothy. Uh, but So this is my clean sound with a bit of herb. With a humbucker. And now with the sonic distortion. So it almost kind of borders on a bit fuzzy, but it's got a cool feel to it. Really cool 
sounding pedal, but like I said, it's got its limitations. In a live environment, I find you need to crank the piss out of the volume to get it to match your clean sound. It's not too bad now in the room, but I think when the band kicks in, uh, it's something gets lost a little bit, but if you get it set up just right, it's fantastic. But saying about the tone control, this is how quickly it gets out of hand. So this is set just at midday. <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of the Boss DS1. Uh, even all the way down isn't uh, isn't really too dark for some guitars. With the gain up, you would probably get some Eric Johnson fuzz style. Yeah, really cool, but a little bit finicky. Definitely worth showing off though. Uh, and then to the far side here, we've got one of my favorite pedals of all time, the Fox Rocks Octron. Uh, this is the Octron 2. And what you get is an octave up, which is a bit like an Octavia, your direct guitar signal and an octave down. And then with these foot switches, you can select which voices are in the mix. And then you've got a master bypass. So. It's uh, probably better into gain, but let's try it just clean. So this is all three voices all the way up. Really cool. It gets kind of synthy and glitchy. I love that sort of thing. And we can just have a listen to the voices on their own. So octave up is the Octavia type thing. So sort of Hendrixy, your direct signal speaks for itself, and then you've got an octave down. Mixed in with the direct. Sort of in the camp of the Boss OC2, but to me it tracks a little bit cleaner. Uh, the OC2 works great on bass, and it does work well on guitar as well, but it can be very tracking, very tracking issues. It can have some tracking issues on guitar, whereas this doesn't struggle too much. There is some trim pots inside to dial it in, and I have done that to my particular rig, um, but it's quite easy to get it to sound good straight out of the box. And then when you run it into some Maxon Sonic Distortion, you get some carnage and it sounds like this. <laughs> And I find if you take the octave down off and you just leave the up and the direct, it gets quite Octavia-ish. And then when you play above the 12th fret, you get the... And it gets even more crazy if you take the direct off. Ha <laughs> 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 
news. <laughs> These are some recent releases and some upcoming releases that I've got news on. Uh, the new releases aren't necessarily new, but certainly worth talking about. So my good buddies at Wampler have just released the mini Plexi Drive, which is very exciting. And uh, I'm actually due to get one to demo, which is very cool. So look out for that. Also, they've released the Bell, which is their take on the Nobles ODR1 circuit. Um, obviously, I demoed the Wampler Paisley Drive recently, Paisley Deluxe, and that had an ODR style circuit in which I really enjoyed. So looking forward to hearing more demos of that. Next, we've got the Boss GT1000 Core, which looks like they've come out with a direct competitor to the Line 6 HX Stomp. While it's a bit more pricey, I think it comes in at about £600, whereas the HX is about £400 now in the UK. The Core promises pretty much the whole firepower of the, the big boy. So you, it says 24 amp block, uh, 24 effects blocks or amp models. You can do dual amps. It's got USB audio, all kinds of stuff. So it's a very interesting release, uh, considering how popular the Line 6 HX stomp has been. Uh, they've also released the RC5 and 500 loopers. The Gig Rig Company has dropped their G3, which is an update on the classic G2 with all kinds of parallel routing, stereo, MIDI, you name it, it's got it. It's pretty pricey, but uh, if that's your thing, that might be worth looking into. Friedman have got the new small box pedal coming out, which is super cool. I'm really into the Dirty Shirley, and uh, I think it'll be in that kind of ilk, but possibly a little bit more modern sounding. So looking forward to hearing some demos of that. The YouTube guitar community is a buzz about these Amazon Basics pedals, which have come out. Uh, I think they range from between like 25 bucks US and 40 bucks. Got like a boost, distortion, overdrive, looper, delay, something else. <laughs> um, and based on some of the videos I've seen, they're just rebadged Chinese OEM clones. I've seen very similar enclosures from uh, New X and Coco, I think the company was called. Also, a moon have had very similar models of pedal. So it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's kind of cool that you can, if you're a beginner player, just jump on Amazon and get yourself a collection of cool pedals. Lastly, Gone Fishing Effects have released a teaser and I think uh, there's a couple of prototypes floating around of the Boom Blast pedal signature for Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro. I'm a big Biffy Clyro fan, so it was on my radar, but it's come out that the price is going to be about 300 quid. It's a dual-sided distortion fuzz kind of thing. So uh, at that price point, it's going to have to be something pretty special for me to check it out, but still very cool. And I think that will about do us for today. Uh, this was the first possibly only ever episode of the pedals and a pint show <laughs> let me know if you dig it i can certainly look at doing more stuff like this i just haven't really had the time to throw into doing properly produced videos recently with with getting ready for lockdown and everything so there'll be plenty more coming if there's any videos you particularly want to see just let me know and i hope very much to see you in another video Cheers, guys. <laughs>